Hello there, my name is Tim Walter, I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach and in this program we're going to be talking a little bit about the spirit guides and sacred stone circles. I um, had a spiritual awakening years, 20 years ago or so, um, by moving into a house that had a spirit of somebody that had passed away who had returned to be a guardian energy of a house, so it was like a ghost. And I used to have conversations with her using dowsing. So I'd have two dowsing rods and I'd have a conversation with her. She was a particular type of guide that I wouldn't call my own personal spirit guide. She was actually there present in the house as a guardian energy of that house. And in particular of the energy lines that ran through that space. That type of guide we come across quite a lot. Every house has that sort of guide. They may or may not be willing to talk to us more often than not, they are willing. And the thing is that you can walk into any sacred site and actually have a conversation with the guardian energy of the space. And that's what I did here some 15 years ago or so. We're at Long Meg and her daughters, which is a, an ancient stone circle here in Cumbria, sacred stone circles. They're all about interacting with the energy of the earth and the energy of mind and the energy therefore of spirit. Now, dowsing doesn't always take you instantly into the world of spirit, but it can do if you want it to. I would suggest that you practice your dowsing so that you feel confident with it before you start asking for your spirit guides. The first spirit guide that we may encounter would usually be a gatekeeper guide. Quite often somebody that you've actually known from when you were little. They're very often related to you. They might be a grandmother or a mother or a father or grandfather. Don't expect to have just one guide. It's best to work with one in the first instance to get to know them really, really well so that you recognize their feeling. Meditation, of course, is important because that helps establish that connection. Sitting on the earth energy power center in your house will help when you meditate. Long Meg and her daughters. I had quite an interesting experience here in relation to uh, talking to the guardian energy. What I was getting in that kind of meditative state was that this circle was all about aligning male, female aspects of the individual, aligning a society to be in balance. The society that built this stone circle in the first place appeared to build it for the purpose of gaining balance. In other words, what I'm saying is what I was being told was that the ancients that built this circle understood the significance and the importance of subtle energy, the energy of the earth, the earth energy. And part of the reason that this circle, Long Meg and her daughters, was built was in order for the shamans of the time, those that had knowledge of the earth energy, to use it in a constructive and positive way to bring harmony by providing balance. So if you balance the individual, you get a more balanced reality around that individual. And the reason being is that as you change within, as you change, you heal, you um, get more in balance, then the world around you, the world that you encounter as a conscious being, changes also. Each individual connection to spirit is different. There's no point in comparing yourself to somebody else. So try to be patient and just enjoy the experience of meditation, of being calm and at peace, and of connecting through your heart with an aspect of reality that actually is pure love. Mm -hmm.